Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a look at my GoBots Turbo, also known as Machine Robo Series, MR07 Supercar Robo. So stick around for more. Hey guys, M here from Transformers and Video Games and welcome back to the channel. As I mentioned in my intro, today we're going to jump back to 1983 and take a look at my GoBots Turbo, also known as Machine Robo Series MR07 Supercar Robo. Turbo isn't based on a real-life car, it's a sporty-looking futuristic supercar which was heavily featured in the 1980s Challenge of the GoBots television series. Speaking of the television series, Turbo's actually pretty close in appearance to how he looked on the show, much like many of the other figures from the GoBots line at the time. A special thanks goes out to my friend Lotus Stark, who sent me the photograph of Turbo's card back that I'm using in my backdrop right now. If you want to see a very impressive GoBots collection, Lotus has a complete run of the regular size North American GoBots figures and has done a pretty awesome video showing his entire collection. I'm going to leave a link to his channel in the description and would highly encourage you to check it out. So, now that we've got that out of the way, let's get on with the review. Okay, so let's start off by taking a look at the figure in vehicle mode. As I mentioned earlier, Turbo is a really cool futuristic looking supercar, and back in the 80s, who wouldn't want to be seen cruising around in a red sports car just like this one? The figure has an exaggerated, oversized spoiler at the back. In this mode, I'm guessing it's partially for looks, and partially to keep its back end from fishtailing around, while burning some serious rubber back on Gobatron. The body of the vehicle has some nice molded details and panel lines, which really adds to the realism in car mode. A good portion of the front end of the vehicle is made out of painted red die-cast metal, which adds a good amount of weight to the figure despite its small size. The blue translucent windshield is a really nice touch, and I think a good choice over using clear, uncolored plastic. Looking through the window, we get a look at the dashboard section along with the driver and passenger sides of the vehicle. Rather than a traditional looking interior, we see a series of high-tech looking computers, more reminiscent of Kit from Knight Rider than anything we would have ever seen on the roads back in the 80s. This is probably a good time to point out the silver chrome roll bar along the roof of the car. This is actually made out of vacuum metalized plastic, but it looks like shiny metal and gives the figure a more premium look. As expected from any figure from this era, the tires are made out of rubber, which nowadays is unfortunately only something that we see on high-end collectibles. The wheels roll quite nicely and are held in place by metal pins instead of the cheap mushroom pegs that are used on many modern retail figures. They've also used a nice silver chrome plastic for the rims. Again, this was pretty standard fare back in the 80s, but something that's considered to be a premium feature on current Transformers and machine robo figures. The underside of the vehicle is fairly plain. Here we can see the difference in color between the painted red die-cast metal parts and the red plastic parts. For the most part, the vehicle is fairly successful in concealing the fact that it's actually a robot in disguise, but the visible head is obviously a dead giveaway. I think we can all agree that Turbo has a really cool and very successful vehicle mode. Now for a couple of quick size comparisons. Here we have Turbo in the middle, with GoBot's Crasher on the left. Crasher is also known as MR20 Porsche Robo from the Machine Robo series. The figure was a Porsche 956, and it was actually a female character in the 1980s Challenge of the GoBot series. This is the black version, but there was also a white variant that was available around the same time. On the right, we have GoBot Spoiler, which was also known as MR21 Countach Robo, again from the Machine Robo series. Spoiler was a red Lamborghini, and I suppose you could say it was the GoBot's answer to G1 Sideswipe, only on a much smaller scale. As you can see, Turbo looks great with other cars from the GoBots line. Now, for whatever reason, it's a little bit smaller than Crasher and Spoiler, but this is hardly noteworthy compared to the scale issues that we saw in the G1 Transformers line. Next, we have Turbo with a couple of old die-cast metal cars. The one on the left is a 71 Dodge Charger, 
and although I don't know what make of car the one on the right is, it's noteworthy to me because it's one of the surviving cars from my childhood. In my opinion, Turbo fits in quite nicely with these little cars. And finally, we see how Turbo stacks up against a few G1 Transformers mini-bots. Here we have G1 Windcharger on the left and Tailgate on the right. Both of these were Pontiac Trans Am sports cars. Turbo looks quite different since it's not meant to be a real-life vehicle, but in my opinion, it has more of a premium appearance than the Minibots, mainly due to the materials that were used to make it, in particular the painted die-cast metal parts. Having said that, I think they look pretty cool together in vehicle mode. And now we'll get into the transformation. First, pull the back end of the vehicle down until you hear a satisfying click to form the legs. Next, pull the sides of the car out to form the robot's arms. Mine are fairly tight, which is always a positive thing since some GoBots have become understandably loose over the past 35 years or so. Then, flip the hood of the car around to reveal the robot head. And that's it for the transformation. The transformation is a little bit simple for me to describe it as satisfying, but when I was younger, I actually appreciated quick transformations in the context of playing with my stuff. Even when it comes to my preferences as an adult collector, I prefer a straightforward transformation over one that's needlessly complex. That's right, I'm talking to you, MP5 version 1 Masterpiece Megatron. What were they thinking with that one? And now we'll get into the articulation. The arms will rotate a full 360 degrees at the shoulder. And the head will move up and down due to transformation. And that's it for the articulation. Unfortunately, the legs are stationary, but GoBots and G1 Transformers aren't known for having meaningful leg articulation. Now let's take a look at the figure in robot mode. His face looks okay, perhaps a little bit generic looking to be honest. The blue translucent windshield becomes his chest, and in this mode the sticker computer details still work nicely, since it is a robot after all. The silver chrome roll bar divides the upper and lower half of his body, giving him kind of a waist section. His fists have molded square holes, but this is kind of a moot point since he doesn't come with any accessories. Off camera, I actually attempted to have him hold Jeeper Creeper's machine gun, but unfortunately I couldn't get it to fit in his hand. Turbo's got shiny silver chrome thighs, which break up the predominantly red color of the robot mode. And here we see why he has such a large spoiler in car mode. It forms his feet, giving him some really good stability in robot mode. The back of the figure is very clean. He has no extra vehicle kibble hanging off of him, which is always nice. Overall, I think Turbo has really nice proportions in robot mode. Bandai has actually done a really nice job on the design. If you're like me and you care about the date stamp on vintage figures, or just want to avoid picking up a knockoff version, on his inner right leg, it says Bandai 1982 Japan. And on his left leg, it says MR07, along with what I'm assuming is some Japanese writing, likely also saying MR07 for consistency with the English writing. Now for a couple of quick comparisons in robot mode. First off, here's another look at Turbo with Crasher and Spoiler. They're all pretty close to the same height, but I think that Turbo's proportions in robot mode look the best. If I were to rate these three robot modes in order from best to worst, I would say that Turbo is the best, followed by Crasher, leaving Spoiler as the weakest of the three. Having said that, I'm interested in hearing what you think. Leave me a comment in the comment section ranking these three robot modes from best to worst. Now we'll take another look at Turbo with G1 Wind Charger and Tailgate. I think that they look really good and fit in nicely together in robot mode, more so than they did in vehicle mode. I've said this in the past, but anyone who says that GoBots are garbage compared to G1 Transformers really need to compare apples with apples. It's not fair to compare a figure like Turbo with a deluxe size vintage Transformer like G1 Sideswipe for a couple of reasons, including size and price point at the time. 
I think if you compare the GoBots with G1 Minibots, the designs are every bit as cool as the Transformers were. Where they lacked, of course, was in their marketing, but that's a discussion for another time. Okay guys, here we are with Turbo back in his vehicle mode, and I think I'm going to leave it at that for today. In conclusion, would I recommend adding a GoBots Turbo or Machine Robo MR07 Supercar Robo to your collection? Well, if you're a fan of GoBots or Machine Robo figures, then I think this figure is an absolute must-have. It looks great in vehicle mode and in robot mode. It's still fairly affordable despite being over 35 years old. It's got excellent build quality, and it was heavily featured in the Hanna-Barbera Challenge of the GoBots 1980s television series. For any of you collectors out there who like your figures to have a good screen presence. If you're not currently a GoBots collector, but appreciate G1 Transformers, it definitely fits in nicely with any G1 Minibots display. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, everyone. Take care.